Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here, and today I want to run through a tutorial on creating this carved stone or concrete text look in Photoshop. It's a fairly easy setup, not too many layers, and I tend to stay away from the Photoshop 3D workspace. Just a personal preference, I find it a little bit rigid, so I'm going to show you how creating this 3D look by hand is actually fairly easy to do. So. We'll check out how to create some big, chunky, damaged areas without having to paint anything by hand, then get a realistic extrusion going, and we'll skip the standard drop shadow effect and check out a way to create these more dramatic cast shadows. That's all coming up. Let's get started. All right, I'll get started with a new document here, and I'm going to work at 3840 by 2160. Just nice and large to get some good detail in there. Uh, background color will be white and create. Then I'll press T from my type tool and get some text in here. I'm using a font called Chuck Noon, which I'll link to below. Command return to exit live type mode and then Command T just to transform and scale that up. And I'll just eyeball it to the center, something like that, and return. Now, the first thing I want to do is roughen up the edges of the type a little bit. I can't really do that on a live type layer. You're kind of committed to those shapes. So I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a new empty layer, and I want to fill it with black. So I'll press D to make sure my default colors are selected, and then Option Delete to fill with my foreground color or black. Then I'm going to hover the cursor over my original text layer and Command Click to make a selection in the shape of the text. I'm just going to turn off that original text layer and forget about that one. So with my black layer still selected, I'll press the Create Mask button to create a mask in the shape of the selection. And the reason I'm creating a solid black layer with a black and white mask rather than just text with transparency is you have so much more room to manipulate a black and white mask than you do a black and transparent layer. Many of the filters don't cooperate well with transparency, but black and white values, you just have a lot more options. So let me show you how this will work. If I option click on the mask, then I can edit it directly and I can apply filters or kind of do whatever I want and that's just going to change the shape of the letters. So with the mask selected, I'm going to go filter and filter gallery. Then first I'll go to this brush stroke section and select spatter and I'll set that to 15 and 15. Then I can add another filter by clicking on the new filter tab here. And for this one, I'll go to the sketch section and add stamp. And to keep it simple, just go 15 and 15. Looks good enough for me and OK. So I'm liking this as kind of my jumping off point, but I want to do another round of roughening up the edges by using a mask in a slightly different way. So first, I'm just going to apply that layer mask and commit to this new shape as my letters. I'll right click over the mask and select apply layer mask. OK, so follow me through a couple steps and you'll see how this next piece works. I'm going to hover over my layer icon and command click to make a selection in the shape of the layer and then click here to create a mask. And then with this mask selected, I'm going to go to filter, pixelate, crystallize. And I'm going to set this crystallize filter to 15. I really just recently figured out what I could use this crystallize filter for, but I'm kind of obsessed with it. And you'll see I'm going to use it over and over again in this video. So I'll hit OK and let me zoom in and we can check out what that did. Because the filter was applied to a mask, and a mask can only hide parts of a layer, it can't add anything, it just created these little missing chunks, which gives the edge this kind of chipped away look. All right, so next up, I'm going to start to get some texture in here. I'm going to open this Texture Labs Concrete 121, Command A to select that, then Command C to copy, Command W to close, and Command V, I'll paste it right here on top of my text layer. Then hovering in between those two layers, I'm going to Option click to create a clipping mask so the texture just lives inside of the letters. Before I go any further, let me rename this text layer to Face. That's going to be the face of our stone type. All right, next I want to show you a cool way to add some big carved away details on the face of the letters. And it's one of these things you'll have to follow me for just a second to see how it works. First, I'm going to create a duplicate of my face layer here. And I'll do that by holding Option and then just dragging a duplicate all the way to the top. I'm also going to put this duplicate in the clipping mask with an Option click. And I'll rename it and call it Destroy. Then I'm going to select the mask on this destroy layer and go up to filter and I'm going to use this crystallize filter again and this time I'll crank it way up to 80. I'll hit OK and you might be able to see the kind of shapes this is starting to create. I'm actually going to use the crystallize filter one more time and set it to 5 just to get some little rough details in there and OK. 
And now I'm starting to get a nice shape for those big cracked edges. So I'm gonna select the regular RGB chain on this layer again and go to Effects, Bevel, and Emboss. And here I'll reset to default and then I'm gonna change the style to outer bevel and I'll set the depth to 70, then the size to 50, and I'm gonna change the highlights to color dodge and put those at 20% and the shadows to color burn. And those are at 60%. And finally, I'll just change the global light angle here to 60 degrees so the light's coming in a little bit more from the side. And here's the key to the whole thing. I'm gonna go to this blending options tab and turn the fill opacity slider all the way down to zero. What this does is makes the entire layer transparent, but it leaves any effects you've applied. So we're just left with those outer bevel and emboss contours. And I'm gonna hit okay. Cool, so we've got some good chipped away areas going. I'm gonna add another texture into those areas just to give it another level of detail. I'm gonna open this concrete 178, which is kind of a nice even grit. And I'll select all and copy that and close it. Then I wanna paste that all the way on top, command V. Then I'll hover in between the layers and option click to also include that in the clipping mask. And I wanna create a mask for that layer so it just goes on the chipped away areas. I'm gonna command click on the mask of the destroy layer and press my create mask button. Then I need to invert the mask with command I. And I'm gonna set that layer to linear burn mode. And linear burn is one of the layer styles that blends in a more attractive way when you bring the fill down rather than the opacity. So I'm gonna bring the fill down to about 30. All right, well, I think the look of the face of the letters is starting to come together. I'm gonna to shift over to working on some depth with that extruded edge. And if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. In the next tutorial, we're gonna get into this awesome moody neon effect. So hitting that alarm bell will notify you when that goes live. All right, extruded sides. First thing I'm gonna do is make a copy of this face layer. And I want the copy to be underneath the original, so I'm gonna hold Option and then drag one down to make a copy. I'm gonna rename that edge, and I'm actually just gonna delete the mask on this layer. I don't need all those gritty details for the extrusion. Then Command T to transform that layer, and I'm gonna hold down Option and scale it symmetrically. I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit to create the suggestion of those extruded sides, not too much. The more exaggerated I make this, the more I'm gonna to have to deal with the fact that I'm faking the depth, but something about like that looks good. And before I go any further, I need to make two copies of this. I also want these underneath the original. I'll hold Option and then drag one down, and Option and drag one more. I'm not gonna use these yet, but I'll rename them and it'll give you a clue what they're for. I'm gonna call one Cast Shadows, and the other light bounce. And I'll just turn those off for now. So obviously this method of creating 3D is a cheat and it's not perfect, so I'm just gonna use the brush tool and paint in a few of the explicitly missing details. I'll select that edge layer, then B for my brush tool, and then I'll right click and set the size to 20 and make sure the hardness is at 100. Then I'm just gonna look for these areas where the illusion of depth is kind of falling apart, primarily on the corners, and just make my way around and kind of paint those missing pieces in. Since I want this to be kind of rough looking anyways, I'm not looking to get it perfect. I'm kind of just cruising around and looking for areas where there are clearly missing pieces. And something like that will do. Okay, so I've got my quote unquote extruded edge and I'm gonna put that same texture into the edge. Let me option drag this texture down and put it over the edge layer and then option click to create the clipping mask and get it into the edges there. And I'm gonna press V for my move tool and move that texture just a little bit so you get a little variation on it kind of where it turns the corner. And next I'm gonna get some shading going on the edges by selecting the edge layer and going to effects, bevel and emboss. And I'm just gonna create kind of a big washy bevel emboss to fake some shadows. First I'll reset to defaults and then I'm gonna set the depth to 300 the size to 70, the highlights down here to 20%, and I'll switch those to color dodge mode, then the shadows to 60%, and I'm gonna set those to color burn. Then I'm gonna change this gloss contour tab to this kind of S curve over here, and okay. All right, and now I wanna create even a little more differentiation between the face and the edges by selecting the face layer and going to effects, and I'm gonna use drop shadow. 
I'll reset that to default, and then I'm gonna set the opacity to 30, the distance to 100, and the size also at 100. And I'll also switch the blend mode here to color burn, and that is looking good. Okay, and now while I'm looking at the face and the sides here, it's a little too crisp here on the corners, a little Photoshoppy, so I'm just gonna give it a single filter blur more. And the nice thing about the way this is set up with this texture living inside of a clipping mask is that that didn't blur the texture at all, it just blurred the layer that defines the edges. So I'm able to get a little more of a soft edge but retain all the detail in that stone texture. All right, and next I'm gonna go back to this cast shadow layer that I created a minute ago. I'll solo that out real quick, we can take a look at it. It's basically the shape of the back of the extruded letters in black on a transparent layer. The first thing I wanna do is fill the transparent area with white, so I'm gonna go Edit, Fill, and under Contents, I'll select White, and then here in Mode, I'm gonna set this to Behind. Okay, and you can see that just filled the transparent areas with white. I'll Option click here to unsolo it again, and I'm gonna to go to Filter, and in Blur Gallery here, I'm gonna select a Path Blur. Now, if you haven't noticed, I like to use a lot of Photoshop tools for purposes they weren't necessarily originally intended for. This is definitely one of those cases. I found that I can use this path blur to actually create kind of a cast shadow. So I can drag this little handle here and kind of approximate the angle of my lighting. And then I'm gonna change the path blur type from basic blur to rear sync flash. And these little slider tabs you can kind of just mess with endlessly. I'm gonna set the speed to 150 and this endpoint speed to 200. And I'll just eyeball that angle. I want it a little bit more from the side and okay. So this one always takes just a minute to process on my machine at least, but there we go. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But does it look pretty good? Yeah, and it's quick and it's easy and it's really starting to look like a cast shadow. I think really the only problem here is that it looks like these two surfaces aren't really touching. The light and the shadow aren't really interacting with each other. So let me show you how I'm gonna address that. I'm gonna select this edge layer and then hovering my cursor over the layer icon, I'll command click to make a selection in the shape of the layer and create a mask. And now with the mask selected, I'm gonna to go to filter and blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna blur that by just 12 pixels. Now, you can see when I turn the preview on and off what it's doing, it's creating a soft mask at the edge of those shapes that's just kind of helping blend the background and the foreground together. So, okay. And I'll go ahead and get a background in here. I think that'll make it look even a little more glued together. I'm just gonna option drag one of these texture layers down to the bottom for a background. Then I'm gonna select this shadow layer and set it to multiply. And I wanna lighten up the background a little bit to create some contrast with the type. I'm gonna select the background layer and then under my adjustment layers menu, create a levels adjustment layer. Then here I'll set the midpoint to 1.7. And I'm also gonna select this background texture and move it over just a little bit to kind of offset some of those details. Okay, so everything's coming together here, but I've got this one lingering layer that's been waiting, this light bounce layer. And this will be a subtle one, but I think a good thing to think about anytime you're painting in light and shadow. Light is coming down here and creating these dark areas and cast shadows, and in reality, it would also be bouncing some light back up and kind of illuminating the wall here. So that's what this layer is gonna be, effectively the opposite of the cast shadows layer. So I'll turn it on, and if you remember the technique I used to create the cast shadows, I'm gonna repeat that process, but I'm just gonna invert everything about it. So first, I'll fill the background of the layer with white. I can use Shift F5 for fill, and the settings are still in here, so okay. Then I'm gonna invert the layer, and I'll change the blending mode to color dodge. And then I'm gonna go back into filter, and in blur gallery, I'll choose this path blur again. And here, I'm gonna use the same settings. I'll change it to rear sync flash, with the speed at 150, and the endpoint speed at 200. But this time, I'm gonna reverse the direction. So now I'm not sending a shadow down, but sending light back up. And okay. And that's starting to be the right look, but I think just way too strong. Color Dodge is another blending mode that looks better when you bring the fill down rather than the opacity. So I'm gonna bring the fill way down, almost to where your eye doesn't even notice it, about 20%. And that may seem almost invisible, but you can see that when I turn it on and off, that all of a sudden without it, it feels like something is missing. 
And it also helps to kind of organically create some contrast between the face and the background here. So that's all the pieces, and for kind of a final adjustment and to bring a little contrast into the entire image, I'm gonna go to the very top and create an adjustment layer, a levels adjustment layer. And here I'll set the black level to 18, bring the white level down to 244, and I'm gonna slide the midpoint to 0.9. And that is my finished image. I hope this technique comes in handy for you, or at least you picked up a few tricks along the way. You can find all the textures I'm using in this tutorial and many, many more at texturelabs.org. Please do hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.